<laughs> What's going on, everyone? I'm all paranoid about saying your name wrong. I'm joined by Victor Adame Minguez. That's right. Coming all the way. Are you back home now, or are you out and about? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm back home right now. Back in Mexico. Back in Mexico. Okay. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of things to take care of. So, I wish I could do GPs for more than just a weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so for people that don't know, we met. I, I um slithered my way into a room where I probably was uh, out of my realm a little bit, but um, got to meet you and uh, and guilt you into uh, sharing some time with me and talk about your art. And um, I I came away feeling like uh, after meeting you uh, that you were a very genuine, nice person. Now, you either really fooled me or... <laughs> Um, that is the case. Either way is fine by me. Um, so how many, um, so I guess I want to start out asking you about, um, the GP scene. I mean, uh, you're a relatively yep. new artist in the magic world. Um, how many GPs have you gone to or uh, signing events and things like that? Uh, four. Uh, yeah, this was my fourth one. I've done GP Quebec city, GP Mexico city. GPDC last March, and this one GP Minneapolis last week. Uh, so that one Minneapolis had to be uh, by far the smallest of all those. I imagine. Um, no, actually, uh, Mexico City was the the smallest by far. Interesting. By far, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're a large uh, city, but not a lot of people play Magic down here. So, oh, I guess not compared to the U.S. Sure. At least, um, from all I really know about, um, I, you know, admittedly. Uh, you know, it's easy to get caught in our own world. I, I mean, my subscribers often talk about uh, playing, uh, well, really anywhere but the United States. It's very expensive. And then when you have conversion rates and, and import export taxes, it can become, I, I don't assume Mexico is that bad, but I know in some places like South America or Australia, yeah. you know, things are five times, six times the price. And it's hard to play the game if you can't yeah, afford it. Yeah, it. it gets really hard. I mean, not, not as much uh, limited. When you try to play limited, it's not as bad when like a regular set. Uh, but now you're trying to buy Eternal Masters, and it's and it gets it gets up there. So yeah, yeah. Um, so so we met there, and you had uh, your your uh, Avison's Judgment playmat. Very nice looking playmat. I'm happy to thanks, man. Have that. Yeah, it turned out great. And um, I was looking through some of the other cards, and um, I was actually talking to um, Jeff this morning, Maricola. Yep. He's from Wisconsin, too. He lives like 10 minutes away from me or 15 minutes away from me. Yeah, I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wisconsin, right next to Minnesota, man. Yeah. Um, All I know about Wisconsin is the Bridges of Madison County, and that's it. Is that about Wisconsin? Uh, well, Madison County, I think, is in Wisconsin. I don't know. I've never seen that movie. I know our well, capital is Madison. Yeah, don't, don't watch it. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it seems like uh, I feel like I've avoided that movie successfully, and I'll continue that, continue that trend. But um, anyway, um, I he has such a huge portfolio of magic cards. It's impossible to know everything. And even I was looking um, th through yours. You seem to have quite a few of. In the most recent sets, Gear Pier, Gear Crafter, the Stone yep. Speaker, Brutal Expulsion. So you've been really kind of kicking ass in the in the most recent sets. Thanks. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, been been around for a while, and I, and I just started. I've been I've I've been playing the game for a while now, and I know his work, and I'm I'm a huge fan of his work. So I was re like real excited to meet him, and same happens with with any artist at any GP. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty new to it. Yeah, that that's one thing that I thought was unique. Um, after talking to you, like uh, I try to not ask the kind of the cheesy, um, like, yeah. "Hey, uh, you know, where do you get your inspiration from?" Kind of kind of yeah. questions. I just <laughs> think they're impo it's like asking a band about their songwriting process or whatever. It's just so lame. But uh, one thing that I did. I, I always assume that like we talked about actually that there's some percentage of the artist community that that uh, design magic cards that play, 
but it's not a lot. And so yeah, not a lot. When you and like I try to not always ask about it because I don't want people to be like, oh, he doesn't even play Matt. You know, it's hard to. Um, I don't know. I don't know what are, what is in people's heads, but for you, I know specifically that you really do enjoy the game. And yeah, I, uh, I heard that you uh, that you took it to actually you took it to Jeff in the in a draft. And, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could tell it was still burning him a little bit because he was kind of giving me the bad beat story, you know. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. we uh, we had a draft going on with the judges. We were invited to that uh, judge dinner they they always have, have after GPs, and they uh, we were invited to draft uh, shadows over in Estrada. And I was like really, really frightened to be uh, up against one of the judges. Yeah. But no, luckily I was a, uh, I was a, uh, playing Jeff, and <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of bad and kind of good at the same time because he he's just starting to to know the basics of the game, uh, but I was uh, I was misled by Aaron. Uh, they taught they they told me that that Jeff already knew the basics of the game like the fundamentals. Yeah. But he didn't quite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of bad to to beat him that bad. Yeah, that you run into that sometimes uh, at pre-release events too, right? Like even if yeah. you're not a pro, but if you know the game, and then you you play someone, you you kind of don't want to crush their soul. You just you know, exactly. you want to give you, you a win. You want to make them in love with the game. You want to make them like the game. Yeah, and that's I mean, winning especially in a in a friendly draft in a friendly environment, you don't want to. Uh, crush them so bad so yeah. that was kind of my bad if we're missing, <laughs> like, if we're missing a, another player it's it's my fault yeah yeah well um how do you actually i can feel like i can ask this question how, how, how have you been able to do uh, um some drafts with shadows uh outside of that uh judge event um we had one at pre-release night sure i think a uh, stupid cell phone let me right, just uh, mute it. Uh, yeah, I've had I think four. Yeah, including that one. It's I find it to be pretty fun. It's pretty diverse, and there's like it yes. seems to be a lot of different archetypes that can be pretty good. And I love it. I I love it because it takes you back to the basics. I mean, it reminded me of of the times that I started playing around uh, onslaught and. Back in times where where it was simpler, we just uh, had uh, your creatures and your removal spells, and that was that was it. Not not no complicated mechanics, no, no nothing like that. So yeah, yeah, I do I do enjoy that. There's something to just kind of playing your creatures and turning them sideways that is kind of yep. appealing sometimes. Um, so, uh, let me ask how how did you kind of so I you've been doing illustration or art for obviously you didn't just pick up a pencil to draw magic cards. You have no. been doing this for some time. And, um, how was the, how was breaking into that? I always ask this question because I think there is a certain percentage of people. Um, maybe it's 10, 20%. I, I don't know. It's complete guess, but there's a non zero percentage of people that enjoy magic really purely because of the art mm -hmm. and then i know a lot of every time i do an interview with an artist there's i get a, a lot of these uh folks coming out of the woodwork and and um i'm always uh compelled to ask you know how, how does one yeah. how does that journey go getting into drawing something that you really like um because i think that that would interest people like do you just go and apply or how does that work uh -huh. Yeah, I get a, I get this question from from a lot of people, uh, either in in the internet or in Facebook, on Twitter, or uh, or on any convention I'm I'm in. I'm in. Uh, so yeah, basically basically there's like an email address that you can apply to. But what I did is that I met with other artists from Magic um, who were at, at Comic Con. I actually went to Comic Con. I had been going to Comic Con for a while, and they had these uh, boots, like uh, you know, boots. Just like at the GP, right? Yeah, yeah just like at the GP, uh, but uh, with different companies such as Blizzard and Wizards of the Coast and what have you. And they have like specially, um, they send out their art directors to specially do um, portfolio reviews. So that's that's a great way to. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, well, 
I didn't get uh, <laughs> the job through one of those. Uh, it was from another artist at, at Comic Con, Mark Winters, which I ac actually talk about is uh, about this in a blog. You can go to my Twitter, and that's the, the pinned post that's there. I talk about how I I got, I got into magic. So, do you want to tell it? Um, I'll have it. I'll actually. You can see the overlay now. It's blank underneath you. I'll put your yep. your Twitter handle and your website underneath awesome. there, so everyone can go and help support um one of the big reasons that i like to do these artist interviews is one i don't think like an artist and so it's always very interesting to me i i see the words the world as like an excel spreadsheet and not it's just uh it's hard for <laughs> me to even understand thinking spatially yep. things like that and um it's also important to me that artists uh have an outlet to support themselves outside of um you know the commission work. freelance work yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. i mean i think there's a misconception that you know if your art's on a magic card you're you know you that's yeah. it you know it pays all your bills yeah. and everything's good but the reality is i mean i i know i know a few but yeah sure, sure. Uh, it's just but just a bunch and yeah now and as i was telling you i met this artist mark winters and Shortly after that, he became permanent art director for Wizards, which was kind of, kind yeah. of a lucky timing. I yeah, guess. one of those uh, you create your own luck situations, right? Yes. Like you it went was, out and it got was, it, and you got paid off. Yes. So, but you, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, you're. I'm interviewing you. You know, so feel free to tell me to. You know, stop. No, but uh, what I was gonna uh, gonna say is that the art directors are very uh, very open people. If you know these people, you can uh, you can message them. You can ask them where to where to apply. You have to be very very good at art, though. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine that uh, a bit of self uh, evaluation is important. Know where you stand compared to everything else, and they're busy too, right? I mean, they have to. Yeah. They're gonna look at something, and you're either—I mean—they're gonna know right away if you're in the realm of what they're looking for. I imagine. Yep. Exactly. So, um, in the uh, oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong notes. Um, so the other th thing I wanted to ask was um, with between your GPs and the event, uh, or between the GP and when I met you that night, you mentioned. Um, having some other long-term plans outside of drawing. I'm, I'm assuming art will always be a part of your life and maybe a drawing for magic would be, is, is great because you like the game and you like to draw. It's the perfect, yep. perfect match. But what are some things like longer term that, that you might want to be doing or might be looking forward to down the road? Uh, actually, <laughs> I, I have no plans, dude. Yeah. Um, I have like a, like a small term plan, which is art. You know that that can easily go away. I mean, magic is not. I mean, uh, it's it's my only job right now. It's the only thing I do, and the only thing I try to do. I try to avoid uh, other clients just to focus on magic. Yeah. But I know that's uh, even even if they they love me, even they, even if they commission me a lot, I know that's not a certain thing. I shouldn't take that uh, for granted. So what I'm doing right now is trying to invest, quote unquote, on uh, real estate, okay, and have like, and you know, have some some place to to set up a few office uh, buildings or offices or something like that to rent and have a little bit of income. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I do something similar with my YouTube channel. I work people people see my YouTube channel and they're like. Oh my God! One hundred twenty thousand subscribers. You must be a millionaire, you know. And must be loaded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the reality is, you know, this is my real estate. You know, it provides yeah. some passive income for when uh, things are tight. Otherwise, you know, I think to be to make it in in this world, you have to like guys like you and and Jeff, for example. After talking to him. You have to have a bit of entrepreneurial spirit, which it sounds like you yes. do. You know, you can't yeah. just draw. Um, you'll go, people will, you, you know, it seems like you'll just get overshadowed and you just can't make enough money doing that. 
Yeah, it. I mean, I, I do. It's yeah. Uh, for me, li- living here, it's it's like real, really cheap. Like compared to the U.S., it's super cheap. And when I talk about real estate, it's it's not how you might picture it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. it's, it's it's apples and oranges. Sure. It it doesn't give me a lot of money, but just enough to to make it. Yeah. So you you got to have a plan. Well, and I noticed that on your website, which I'll link in the description below, you can see um, both. Uh, you can get prints of almost anything, including you just added Mails from Wander, which is not on your website yeah. yet. Uh, no, no, yeah. Yeah. So in all your uh, infinite you, free time, get it on yeah. there. You go to my website and there's like a small button on the on the right corner. Oh, the and print shop. Says, and it says print shop and it, it, it leads you to, to the uh, imprint print shop. Okay. Maybe I'll link I'll link that too. Um, I just bought uh, my first set of prints actually. I haven't even opened them yet. Uh, nice. From Winona Nelson. who. Uh, nice. I got some Arlen Cord stuff and um, I'll put them around and I, I, I kind of enjoy the idea of art. I don't, I have concrete blocks behind me, so I can't really hang them up down here, but <laughs> I can hang them up upstairs in, I, I'm in my basement. Uh, that's where I work from. So um, yeah, I, have, I have tons of art. You can see. Uh, oh yeah. Command I see it on the tower. back there. Yeah. Command tower, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, right. You, so how does the um, so now that you guys can, you you um, you guys were talking something about the playmat. So if somebody wanted to get one of your pieces of art on a playmat, is that possible now? Uh, I would have to do it, and I would have to sell it to that person. You can, um, I mean, you you cannot go and, and make the playmat. No, and... no, yeah, right. That's not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yes, um, they cannot infringe on your copyright. Exactly. But, exactly. Um, and on Wizards, uh, Wizards uh, copyright. Oh, Wizards yeah, exactly. Copyright. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we can now um, print our uh, Wizards images or magic uh, work on playmats and sell them, like we do, like we have always been uh, doing. Mm-hmm. So that's that's amazing. Yeah. Have you had any inclination to do that? Could you do uh, yeah, like a? Uh, uh, could you do like a crowdfunding for it or something? Because I imagine you have to incur the expense of buying all the mats or um yes uh but not right now right, like right now I'm, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna take the take the hit myself because oh, okay. i'm probably just gonna do one i i know a lot of people who are, who are doing three four maybe like uh i met um noah back at dc he had three therese had three and eric de had had three made so but they have a lot of cards out, and I don't. Yeah. So I'm just gonna start sm- small and just uh, do one, see how that goes, and start ma- start making more. Do you know which one you're gonna re- which one you're gonna do? Uh, probably Maelstrom Wanderer first. Yeah, I feel that's, like that's popular among com- commander players. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be probably a good idea. I mean, you have some ex- some very popular card art too. I mean, as like uh, ignoring art, but um, yes. you know, Valor Stance is. You know, a stand was was a standard staple for a long time. Yeah, totally. Uh-huh. Yeah, the the thing is, the thing is that that with art, uh, players don't don't uh, don't necessarily. Um, oh man, I'm I'm losing my English right now. <laughs> is it, uh, are you saying connect to it? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, of? don't 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 associate it. Uh, the cards not really don't doesn't really break out of the modern or standard. Uh, barrier don't really associate it with the art the card with the art so it's it's pretty difficult to me and i have that uh because i've been doing um the event playmats which i did dc i had the the event playmat i had one of the three event playmats um uh, this uh gp minneapolis and gp manchester had my art on the playmat and now costa rica also had my art on the playmat and I had my leftovers, uh, my leftover playmats from DC to sell here, and none of them sold. Interesting. So, yeah, <laughs> none of those sold. I sold every every, every other playmat, but not those. So it's pretty hard to, to have an image that, uh, even if the art is good, because I th- I think the art is good. Like personally, I like it. There are pieces for me that I don't, but this one I do. And but players don't don't associate the art with them. 
with the card. And yeah, it just doesn't sell. What um, is it on the? Is it on your store? Maybe some people from uh, the MTG headquarters subscribers might pick some up from you. Uh, no, I don't have them on my store on my on my website. It's 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 terrible to ship uh, overseas. Oh me. yeah, yeah. I, guess. I just limit it to to events. I would try to do events even on in Europe or or what have you. Uh, but but no no shipping. Yeah, yeah. I, I um I do a play mat every year. In fact, last year maybe we'll do the MTG headquarters 2016 play mat. Yeah, I try yeah. to commission. Um, an artist from the magic community. Hold on. Yep. So like this is last year's. Um, but oh yeah, John Avons. Yeah. So he did. Um, he just did like I said. Don't draw something from scratch. Just take something that you have, and then change huh. it a little bit. You know, because with digital, uh, it's a lot easier. I imagine. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's totally doable. I mean. Uh, the playmats that I have here in my home, I cannot ship. But if we do it in the U.S. and you know ship them to you, yeah, that'll yeah. be that'll be a lot easier. Yeah, the um, definitely. We'll definitely uh, talk on that because I'd definitely be interested. Um, but uh, we'll we'll keep that to the DMs. I'm sure people won't be yeah. too pumped about uh, me talking shop. What they probably want me to ask is, what kind of medium do you like to use? Do you have a favorite? Uh, are you more of um, digital? I talk to, um, you know, some people like acrylic, some people like oils. I know nothing about these things. I just know these words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, acrylic is uh, pretty much plastic, uh, plastic uh, medium. And I, I and I do like it. I do enjoy acrylic. Uh, I think it's easier. It's more convenient because you you only need you only I, I think the medium maybe, but you can paint like straight up in a, in, a, in a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood, and it's pretty convenient. I like pencils. I like uh, I do not like oil painting okay. all that much. I like I like the outcome, but I don't like the process, and I, I don't like to clean stuff. <laughs> drives me nuts yeah uh, I do enjoy uh, digital painting because I'm, I'm fairly new to it I think I've been painting uh, digitally for for about two years now since I started magic I think one year prior to that I started do, uh, doing digital and I really like it I, I mean it's pretty convenient and and so far it's been it's been good also another thing is that I like sculpture oh yeah. okay yeah Sculpture. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's, and this guy I used uh, as reference for Tajuru Path Warden is a ballot. Oh okay. You All can right. see it. Five Oop. four trample vigilance. That's right. <laughs> so I uh, yeah I do like uh, using sculpture to you know to help with the reference and stuff. Okay yeah I I could see that. When you deliver something to wizards, how does that ha have to get delivered? Is it digital? Do I mean I imagine when you draw stuff, um, is there a process for them to take it? Oh, I'm I'm sure there is, but do most artists now submit digitally, or do you have? I mean, do they require you to do that, or can you s paint it on canvas and then take and ship it? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I uh, they they used to do that, and if you talk to the to the vintage guys. The, the older guys, the, the first artists in Magic, they, they did like really small paintings because they just have to, had to ship them and they required them uh, to be small to, to actually scan. Okay. But now I'm guessing, I'm, I mean, I'm not sh like 100% sure, but I'm guessing if you do it like a tr traditional, no, traditional painting, cat hair, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have four, a traditional, I understand. Yeah, a <laughs> traditional painting, you have to... Uh, you have to photograph it yourself, or whatever, uh, whatever thing you have to do to make it, yeah, to make it a JPEG and send it over. Okay, yeah, my neighbor actually just in the neighborhood here, he sells these scanners that I'm envisioning people use. They're very expensive, um, but they would scan something drawn or. No, a, a camera works just fine. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, you you need to have like like proper lighting conditions, but once you get a nice uh, adequate camera and tripod. 
you can get lights and then you can set up uh, your own. Well, I guess. Yeah. I mean, geez, you could be taking a 20 megapixel picture. I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah. It'd be totally fine. I mean, yeah. yeah if you're going to go uh, through the hassle of doing a traditional work, I mean, the camera's just, it's just, it's nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's, it's totally necessary. Sure. So, um, is there any events coming up or, um, places that people can, can meet you? Yes. Uh, GP Montreal, if you're in the, uh, Midwest, e, um, I guess, East coast of the United States, you can easily drive to Montreal. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. If you're already, uh, living in Canada, uh, you can go to, you can go to Montreal. I mean, Toronto, Canada is a huge country. Yeah, right, right, Toronto right. Toronto or uh, Montreal. There are a lot of people there, a lot of Magic players. Yeah, it seems like uh, Canada is pretty thriving in terms of the Magic community. When is? Do you know when that is off, off the top of your head? Yes, it's actually the last weekend of July. I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, the 29th to the 31st. Okay. But I, I think, I think I'm, I'm correct. Yeah, I'm but sure. It, I can try to look it up before... I'll probably forget to look it up, but people won't just know. I mean, if you're going to yeah. GP Montreal, you know when it is. Yeah, go to GP Montreal. It's going to be a blast. Uh, already uh, four artists confirmed. Really? Including me. Okay. Yeah, it's from the yeah, it's from the 29th to, to 31st of July. Okay. Um, and then they can check out your prints um, on your yes. website. Uh, if website. they go to your website and click print shop, or I'll put a link to to it as well. Um, I like to put a link to the gatherer stuff too, so people can see. Um, people tend to think of like the rares, right? Always, yeah. you know, like. Um, but you have I, at least gatherer says nine cards. Is that or ten probably with Maelstrom Wanderer? With Maelstrom Wanderer and uh, Valor Stance, which is not in, in there. Oh, why is that? Oh, yeah, it isn't in there. Interesting. Is it alternate art or something? Yeah, it's it's a promo card, which doesn't don't appear on, on Gatherer. And I also have a token. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 3-1 elemental token that I did. Oh, okay, the Chandra token? No, it's it's kind of like the Chandra token. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But it's it's the uh, the Akum Stone Waker token. Oh, which right, because uh, you did that. It's also 3-1, yeah. Yeah, you did that card. It's also 3-1 with haste. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. So if you're going to be, if anyone's going to be at GP Montreal, definitely uh, stop by uh, yep. the booth. Uh, resident nice guy, Victor, will be happy to sell you some prints or sign your cards or foreheads or whatever it is. Yeah. That you <laughs> your need. Maelstrom Wanderers. Yeah. Sure. Your ma oh, yeah. They'll be out by then. So Yeah, they'll be out by then. Yeah, that should be interesting. That'll be it. And then, you know, when you do decide to do that play mat, just let me know and I'll let everyone know because I know people will want to uh, pick that up, especially. Um, yeah. yeah, totally. Uh, it's a legendary, right? Is is a legendary creature? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a legendary creature. Yeah. And it's a mythic. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do appreciate uh, you spending all the time with me today. I know you're busy and, and uh, you squeezed me in. But yeah, it's always man. interesting to talk and hopefully people will check out some of your your art and prints and come meet you. And uh, if nothing else, at least hopefully they were entertained by some some uh, banter about magic art and yeah. things yeah, like th that. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks, man, for having me. It's I mean, it's, it's an honor to be to be uh to be in your show to be in your channel oh man right. oh man yeah well, hey let's well, talk to your you. subscribers today. yeah yeah if you don't have a you don't have a youtube channel by chance do you or no no i don't i, I don't i don't do the youtube thing but you can you can hit me up on twitter or on facebook okay you know you so, can chat i try to i always try to respond even if it's just uh cool work i always say i always try to say thank you or something like that yeah, well, hopefully there'll be a time in which you will have to pay someone else to do that, um, or you know, I know you're all caught up on Penny, <laughs> you're all caught up on uh, Penny Dreadful now. Have you found it? Have you found a new show yet? No, not yet, man. I'm. I mean, I, I've been, I've been watching um, Black Sales, but that one's over too. Yeah, yeah. And also Penny Penny Dreadful. I don't know what when the uh, next episode comes out. But... I think this next season should be starting soon. I think. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's mid season and oh, any yeah, dreadful. Yeah. It's not over yet, but 
I oh, mean, yeah, it's... that's right. And and obviously, uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, I'm a season behind on um, Game of Thrones, although it's impossible to to uh, avoid spoilers. Yes, uh, <laughs> it's very difficult. I try to not tell people what shows um, I like because I like to DVR them, and I travel a bit for work, so I always get behind. But yeah. um, you know, I think you should try the leftovers. I think they're. I'm gonna. Two, right. I think it's two seasons. I think they're in the second season. It's on HBO. It's pretty out there, but I imagine a world after a rapture-like event. And what that would do to people's minds or, you know, some people think it's a religious thing. Some people, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's good. It's good. I think All right. I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. Then. Yeah. At Thanks. least check the trailer, but yeah. Hey, unofficial now, hopefully HBO sends me some money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate your time and, and uh, thanks, thanks so man. much. And if you Welcome. ever need anything, let me know. I will. All right. What's up? And thanks for watching this video. I produce all different kinds of content. So if you haven't yet, click on my face to subscribe. If you want to watch more videos, I've got some sweet playlists, including this one, where I open up every fat pack ever created. I've also got this one over here, where I open just about anything vintage and old and expensive for your enjoyment. And all this is made possible by the awesome backers at our Patreon, which is linked in the description of every video. Hop on over there, check it out, see if it's something you might want to consider. If not, sit back, enjoy, and I'll still love you.